Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Out control, both auto descent, engine command override off. Engine arm off. 13 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Sunday, July 20th, 1969. Around the world, nearly a billion people watch this moment on television as the first man from Earth prepared to set foot upon the moon. At the foot of the ladder, the lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. Although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. All that we have accomplished in space, all that we may accomplish in days and years to come, we stand ready to share for the benefit of all mankind. As we explore the reaches of space, let us go to the new worlds together. Not as new worlds to be conquered, but as a new adventure to be shared. Since the earliest time man has imagined this moment, the moment when his fellow man would make the first journey to the moon, now the time had come. In the sixth decade of the 20th century, the ancient dream was to become a reality. The flight of Apollo 11 was the culmination of many years of planning, working, building, and testing. Thousands of people had contributed toward this day of accomplishment. The great Saturn V rocket and the complex Apollo spacecraft had been assembled together and moved to the launch pad. The equipment and techniques and personnel had been proved in earlier missions, and now they were ready. The astronauts chosen for this mission had flown it many times in ground-based simulators. They had all been in space before. They had trained carefully and well. And now, they too were ready. Astronaut Michael Collins would pilot the Apollo command module. Astronaut Edwin Aldrin Jr. would pilot the lunar module. and astronaut Neil Armstrong would serve as mission commander. Armstrong would be the first man to step upon the moon. July 16th, the day had come. The moon awaited. The men rose early, ate breakfast, and dressed in their spacesuits. Other astronauts had made this journey to the launch pad, but never with such anticipation. 9.32 a.m., July 16th.
three hours later, the Apollo Command Module moves forward to extract the lunar module from the third stage of the launch vehicle. Both are moving at more than 17,000 miles an hour. Docked together, they will sail a quarter million miles across the sea of space and into orbit around the Earth's nearest neighbor. Loud and clear now, Mike, and we understand that you are docked. During the three-day journey to the moon, the astronauts kept busy. Checklists, navigation and observation, housekeeping. They must work in a weightless environment, keeping their spacecraft and themselves in good condition. Data must be collected and reported. Experiments must be performed, including photography both inside and outside the spacecraft. Because of the film speed, these actions appear faster than they actually were. July 19th. Apollo 11 slows down and goes into orbit around the moon. The bright blue planet of Earth now lies 238,000 miles beyond the lunar horizon. Astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin, now in the lunar module, separate from the command module. Astronaut Collins remains behind. Preparation for the lunar module descent to the moon now begins. The command module assumes the new name, Columbia. The lunar module will be called the Eagle. From Columbia, Michael Collins' camera sees bright rays of the sun reflecting patterns of color from the surface of the Eagle. In this strange metallic bird, rides the ancient and endless dream of all mankind. The command pilot can see detail which his camera cannot record. The four landing pads of the lunar module are fully extended and locked in place. The eagle is poised and prepared for its descent to the lunar surface. craft rocket engine fires to slow it down and to place it on the pathway to the landing site in the sea of tranquility. There is tension and caution as the eagle flies lower. Warning lights blink on as the computer tries to keep up with the demand for control data, but the status remains go. Eagle, we got you now. It's looking good. Over. Roger, copy. Eagle Houston after yaw around, angles, uh, S-band pitch, minus niner, yaw, plus one eight. Roger, you're a go to, con you go to continue power descent. You're a go to continue power descent. Altitude now 21,000 feet, still looking very good. Velocity down now to 1,200 feet per second. You're looking great to us, Eagle. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. Roger, we got you. We're going at alarm. Good radar data. We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. Altitude 4200. Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. I do understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. Top alarm. Altitude 1,600. 1,400 feet. Still looking very good. 700 feet, 21 down. 33 degrees. 100 feet down at 19. 1201. 
drifting to the right a little. Uh, hey. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Through the window of the Eagle, Armstrong and Aldrin see what no human eyes have ever seen before. Their spacecraft casts a long shadow across the undisturbed dust of centuries. Seven hours after landing, after careful preparations for later ascent were completed, Armstrong opens the Eagle hatch and begins his climb down to the surface. The first footsteps on this strange new world must be taken cautiously. The moon has only one-sixth the gravity of Earth. The nature of its surface was still unknown. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Once on the surface, Armstrong scoops up a small sample of lunar dust and rock, precaution against the possibility of an emergency takeoff. According to plan, astronaut Aldrin now descends from the Eagle. He and his equipment would weigh 383 pounds on Earth. Here, they weigh about 66 pounds. For a brief moment, the first men on the moon stand and look at the stark, lonely landscape around them, an experience which no one before them can share. But there is much to be done in the limited time which they can stay on this airless, cloudless satellite of Earth. This sheet of metal foil traps and holds particles from the sun, the so-called solar wind, or barrage of solar energy, which constantly strikes the moon's surface. The results of this experiment will be taken back to Earth to reveal new secrets to anxious scientists. An American flag is left behind on the moon, together with medals honoring American and Soviet spacemen who lost their lives in earlier space tests, and a small disk carrying messages of goodwill from 73 nations on Earth. A plaque on the lunar module reads, Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 A.D. We came in peace for all mankind.